right and share my screen you guys see my screen now yep we can see it very good thank you so uh <clears throat> what we have been doing so far so we um introduced uh, let's see all right we introduced um the moment equation from our brain which is cm naught plus cm alpha times alpha plus cm delta times delta right and a similar equation for the cm versus cl we we have said that you know this is each one of these constants it has wing and tail contribution wing and tail contribution so uh, in particular we learned how to size the tail how to size the tail s tail to adjust this cm alpha we learned that cm alpha must be negative for the airplane to be stable and the wing contribution the part that is coming from the wing is mostly positive so it's destabilizing so we need to have large enough area of the tail to make the airplane stable so this is how we typically size the horizontal tail okay how, so let's let's uh, like get together and see what are the main components of the airplane well the most important component is the wing right because uh, without a wing we can't fly so because it is providing the lift force and it's typically sized um, by the aerodynamics group the performance group we have we as flight dynamicists flight control people we we have nothing to say about the wing sizing at all so it's already sized then we say hey folks your wing is not enough because it's destabilizing and it's not balanced we need a component called tail. We need to add it to make it stable and to make it balanced. Okay, the, the immediate question from them will be how large your tail would be. So we need to size the tail and we learn how to size the tail. Of course, in reality, this will not be the only criterion in sizing the tail. I mean, in, in your professional work, you will learn other practical criteria, but this is one of the, you know, still what we did, what we do in this class will be at the core. Okay, so we learned how to size the tail, and then we said, yes, we size the tail, the airplane is stable now, and we need to balance it at every moment of flight, which means that we need to control the lift on the horizontal tail, the lift force on the horizontal tail, because this lift force on the horizontal tail causes a moment at the CG, because of the moment arm, and I need to control this moment at every uh, instant of flight to achieve balance, zero pitching moment, at every moment of flight. So how are we gonna control the lift on the tail? We introduced the elevator, right? Which is a flap deflection, simply a flap deflection for the horizontal tail. We control the elevator up and down, the airplane goes up and down. I can create up and down pitching moment by moving the elevator up and down. And there is no confusion, elevator up, airplane up, elevator down, airplane down. And this contribution is shown here in this term, CM delta elevator times delta elevator. Again, the immediate question is how large your elevator should be, right? Whenever we introduce a new component, the immediate question is how large should it be? Can you give me an estimate, a rough estimate? And then towards the very final detailed design phase of the airplane, we're going to refine it later. But at least at the beginning, give me a crude estimate of how large this would be. And actually, this is uh, one of our topics today, how to size the elevator. And obviously, the larger the elevator, the larger this coefficient is. This coefficient, which is CM delta elevator, what does it represent? Sometimes, actually, we call it elevator control power. So how powerful your elevator is, because it gives you for one degree delta elevator, say this is negative 0.1. It means that for one degree delta elevator, I will get a negative 0.1 pitching moment for my airplane. So the larger the elevator, obviously, the larger this 
uh, parameter. It simply represents the sensitivity of your elevator. You know, is it powerful enough? Is it weak? You know, for one degree, how much pitching moment you're gonna get? So it's, we, we expect that it will be proportional to the elevator size. And we're gonna size the elevator to achieve a certain elevator control power. Any question about that? Any question? So this is lecture five, I'm gonna upload it. But we, we're gonna talk about some stuff here. So let me take some snapshot. It's a very interesting problem. Talks about landing. Let's read it together. It says that the largest trim moments occur when an airplane is in the landing configuration. So let's see, why is that? Because what is unique at landing that gives us this, this hurdle? Remember, I need to balance the airplane at every flight condition. Uh, and here is, so this is maybe my, this is my CM alpha curve. CM at the CG, and we already know that, okay, here is, I mean, we, we want the curve to be something like this, right? This is the cruise point, alpha, alpha cruise, I mean, we cruise at zero pitching moment, of course, right? So in landing, the, the angle of attack will be larger than the alpha cruise or smaller, or at the alpha cruise, what do you think? Hmm. Is it larger? Exactly. It has to be larger. So this is, say, alpha landing. Well, why is it larger? Because simply we need to maintain this equality during every moment of flight. Lift equal the weight equal one half rho v squared area lift coefficient. <clears throat> right? And um, if this is the case, then let's see. We have the density is of the air is fixed. We have no control over, right? The area of the wing also doesn't change during flight. It's one the airplane designed, so the area of the wing is fixed. The two things that change during flight is the velocity of the airplane and the CL must change accordingly so that this multiplication is always the same, giving me you know, a lift that balances the weight at every moment in flight. The issue is that during takeoff and landing, and particularly during landing, what happens? This velocity is at its smallest value. So this guy decreases. And if it decreases, say, you know, decreases to one quarter. So this means that I need to provide larger CL. And by how much? It goes by squares, so it's 16 times. So really CL at landing must be the largest CL ever. And how are you gonna attain a large CL? Well, I mean, the CL goes linearly with the angle of attack. Please increase your angle of attack to the maximum possible, maybe right before stall. So this is alpha landing. It's, it's, it is always larger than, I mean, it's the largest angle of attack that can be achieved safely. Any question about that? But if this is the case, then, then here is, if I was flying before at zero pitching moment, everything is balanced. Once I increase my angle of attack now, this is the moment characteristics. The airplane is actually tries to pitch down. It has, it experiences a, a pitching down moment that I must balance, all right? But it's not the only source. I mean, we have actually many other sources, so let's see. So this is the first source is that because during landing, I have a large angle of attack. At large angle of attack, the airplane naturally pitches down. So I need, I need to balance this pitching down. I need to, the airplane to maintain the pitch attitude. What else? I mean, to, I mean, what are we trying to do here? Again, I'm trying to size the elevator. So I'm sizing the elevator to 
achieve enough balance. So I'm trying to look at the worst case scenario where the airplane will be highly unbalanced, okay, to design on this worst case scenario. And it turns out that this worst case scenario is during landing. Why? Because of what I mentioned now and some other factors. And in addition to this thing, another worst case scenario is the following. The airplane is at its most forward CG location. Center of gravity is at its most forward CG location. Let me explain that here. So uh, if this is my airplane, and uh, we before learn it, maybe this is the wing. And this is the tail. All right. So um, remember, this is before this was the, the neutral point, right? And uh, if the CG is here, the airplane is stable or unstable? Stable. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, Simon. It's stable, right? And uh, if, if the CG travels backward, going towards the neutral point, the airplane becomes more stable or less stable? Uh, less stable. Less stable, exactly. If it's exactly at the neutral point, it will be neutrally stable. And if it goes behind the neutral point, it becomes unstable. If the CG travels forward, well, it's the opposite. The airplane will be more stable. Very good. And if the airplane is more stable, CM alpha will become Negative or positive? More negative or more positive? So let's see. First of all, the CG here at the black location, the CM alpha, the slope, this slope, is negative or positive? Uh, negative. Negative. And uh, if the CG is traveling forward, the CM alpha is more negative. Right? I mean, CM alpha becomes zero here when the CG hits the neutral point. So CG and the neutral point, CM alpha is zero. CG behind the neutral point, CM alpha is positive. This is bad, unstable. CG ahead of the neutral point, CM alpha is negative. The slope is negative. And if the CG travels more forward, the airplane is more stable. CM alpha is more negative, is larger in negative. So CM alpha is larger in negative. All right, so CM alpha is larger than negative, so I have larger slope here. So I have this new characteristics in the state, which means that at landing, I'm gonna have this additional pitching moment to balance, all right? So this part, the first part is due to the fact that we're flying at a large alpha, naturally. The second part is due to the CG shift or CG travel. Any question about that? And this is not the only, the only factor. I mean, we're gonna have more factors because at landing, we're flying at, at a high angle of attack. And like I said, say, say we have an airplane flying naturally at say whatever, 800, 800 kilometer per hour cruise, right? 900, 800, it lands at 200. So the, the velocity decreased to a, to a quarter. So if this is decreased to a quarter, the CL must increase 16 times. That's too demanding. So if you, and, and, and the, the CL goes linearly with the angle of attack. So if you increase your angle of attack, I don't know, maybe from two degrees to 10 degrees, five times, this is not enough. I need much more now. So going from angle of attack from cruise to, to the maximum angle of attack, we will increase the CL, but it's not sufficient to get the required CL for balance at landing. I need more CL. How can I do that? Any suggestions? Hmm. Any suggestions? How can we do more to get uh, more CL? Hmm? Can you use the elevator on the tail? Exactly, Eric. I mean, I'm going to use the... Well, I'm gonna use the flap. I'm leaving the, 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 
the elevator of the tail for control. I actually have here a larger flap. I'm gonna use the flap of the wing. So, uh, so here, I'm gonna have my flap down. And this is, will be my surface, all right? So I'm gonna have my flap all the way down. So I have some, I have several surfaces here. I'm gonna have all of them down. If you, I mean, if you remember, if you ride an airplane and you, you're in, I mean, close to the window and you look at the wing during landing, you will find that almost all these surfaces are down because we were hungry, we're lift hungry. We need more lift. Okay, so when you deploy your flaps down, so this is another factor in the during landing is that you you are at high angle of attack, but also you have you have wing flaps down. When you have wing flaps down, you get more lift. That's fine, but there is a side effect. There is a pitching moment, and the pitching moment that you get is it up or down? You remember when you have a flap, you get the flap down, you get more lift. Fine but you get a pitching moment. The pitching moment that you get, is it up or down? It's I actually it's down, down, right? Yes, exactly. So it's actually down. So you get more lift that, that you want, fine, that, that's great, but there is a side effect that you get a down pitching moment. So a down pitching moment will simply shift your CM alpha figure a little bit down. So this purple curve, it will be shifted will be shifted a little bit down. It will move parallel to itself, same slope. So this delta, this shift is actually due to, is due to the flaps, right? So again, it's more, it's more negative pitching moment applied on the airplane at this angle of attack. So the situation becomes exacerbated even more. We're not done yet. So uh, here's one more. Also during landing, as you can see here, I mean, we deploy the landing gear. I mean, we're about to land. So here's the landing gear. What does the landing gear cause? Your center of gravity shifts forward. Uh, Actually, yes. no. Yeah, yes, you're, you're yes. right. You're right a little bit. I mean, it, it depends on it, how, how it was laying down in, in inside the airplane but uh, most likely yes what else what is more significant if the air is coming like this it now it will hit drag. the gear what happened it produces greater drag yeah drag this is actually significant drag and if you're taking 158 this is a big deal i mean later on in the course in the 158 performance class you will see that it shifts the airplane drag characteristics significantly all right, fine. I mean, this is for performance issues. It will consume more fuel. This is not our issue here. We're talking about balance and stability, but look at this scenario. What does, what does this drag force cause to the airplane? A negative moment. Exactly, there is offset here, right? This distance, so this drag force will, will multiply this offset and will cause a down pitching moment at the CG. So it will shift this figure even more. It will move parallel to itself. It's the same slope, but there is some shift due to the landing gear. So uh, again, more pitching moment that need to be compensated. So as a result, you have this huge pitching moment from zero all the way to this red point that you need to compensate. Then the airplane naturally experiences a very large down pitching moment and you cannot permit it you need to allow in equal in magnitude and, and and opposite in direction so a pitching up moment from your uh, poor small elevator all right so uh this is the most demanding situation for the elevator so i'm gonna size the elevator so that when i deflect it by the maximum deflection i can bring this red point here all the way to zero any question about that? Yeah, question. So for the CG shift, why it's like passing, still passing through the A 
a rise instead of just a shift? Uh, I'm sorry, what's the question again? So for the CG shift, why is not also, why is not parallel to the black line? Sure, because the C the CG to uh, so this CM alpha this this is uh, the CM characteristics, right? So this CM alpha is directly function of the CG, the CG location. Like if, if this is the CG, it, it moves backward to the neutral point. What is the corresponding CM alpha? It becomes zero. So, uh, so it becomes zero means that the slope becomes zero. This line becomes horizontal. So if the CG at the neutral point, this line, all these lines, they would become horizontal. Once it moves a little bit forward, the line be becomes having a negative slope like the, the, the black one. If it moves even more, it has even more slope like the purple one and so on and so. So the slope of the curve, the CM alpha is direct function of the CG location. So a shift in the CG does not simply shift the line. It actually changes the slope. The but other factors, the other factors, they don't change the slope. They simply shift the line. So we have two things here. We have CM zero and we have CM alpha. CM alpha is the slope and it's direct function of CG. CM zero is simply a constant added to the curve. A constant added to the curve, meaning it's the same slope, but just you shift it up and down, right? Oh, okay, I see, thank you. You're welcome. So, so, okay, so the airplane naturally pitches down at, at, at high angle of attack during landing. And uh, if the situation is exacerbated even more, the CG shift uh, forward will, will, will make it worse. All right, so I need to provide a positive or negative pitching moment by the elevator. Hmm. Do I need to provide a positive pitching moment by the elevator or yes. negative? Positive. Exactly, positive because the airplane naturally pitches down, negative, so I need to provide an opposite. So positive pitching moment upward, I, we mean, right? Uh, comes from an elevator deflection, upward or downward deflection of the elevator? Upward. Upward, very good. So, so elevator needs to provide large positive CM, right? Which is upward. So pitching up. And uh, there is no confusion with the elevator characteristics. If I want the airplane up, I apply an elevator up and vice versa. So I need to apply this elevator upward elevator here. So the thing will look something like that, all right? And the point is that we need to size this elevator to be strong enough so that when I deflect it to the max upward deflection, because I cannot deflect it all the way up to 90 degrees. Obviously, if you have it all the way up to 90 degrees, you will not get any additional lift here. It would just cause drag, right? So there is a maximum limit. And actually we, we even limit it mechanically. So typically the elevator is, is limited between, you know, 20 to 20, negative 20 to 20 degrees or negative 25 to 25 degrees and so on. So. So when I deflect it to the max, it should be large enough so that when, for the maximum deflection, I get this whole shift, all right? So this is what the, what, the, what the problem is talking about exactly. It says that the largest trim moments occur during landing, because why? Because landing, we already know that uh, we have high angle of attack, this is one. And not only that, we have wing flaps, so this is two. We have landing gear deployed, this is three. All these three factors, they induce negative pitching moment. Not only that, and if I add to it that the center of gravity becomes at its most forward CG location, the situation is exacerbated even more because the slope is now a larger slope. So at a large angle of attack, I will need larger, I will have larger negative moment. So assume that the pitching moment curve during landing is like this. Now estimate the size of the elevator to trim the airplane 
at the landing angle for tack 10 degrees and assume that the elevator is constrained between these two values. All right, so let's see. So from before, this is the general aviation airplane that we actually considered before. It's the general aviation airplane. From before, we already considered its characteristics. The CM was something like this. Let's get it. Uh, the CM was this was the CM CG, all right? This is during cruise. This is the, the black curve above. But now uh, during landing, the red curve, it's here. Oopsies. So negative 0.2, negative 2.01. So landing, for all these factors, the CMCG, negative 0.2, negative 2.01, alpha in radians, right? Yes. So you can see that the CM0, it, 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 it's tripled almost, right? Due to all these factors. And the slope, the CM alpha, it was negative one, now it becomes negative two. It's double due to the CG travel, most forward. All right, so it's clear what happened to the CM alpha characteristics. It becomes more stable, right? But it's, it's now very hard to balance at a high angle of attack during landing. During landing, the angle of attack is 10 degrees. So actually the CM, the CM CG, at landing is simply negative 0.2, negative 2.01, and I'm gonna multiply times alpha. Alpha landing is 10 degrees, but the equation says you should substitute alpha here per radians, in radians, so this is pi over 180. So I get that this is negative 0.55. So the airplane naturally pitches down with this large pitching down uh, moment coefficient. So how much, the elevator need to provide positive 0.55. Exactly, very good. So the elevator needs to provide positive CM equals positive 0.55, right? Maybe this is the elevator contribution, right? And this is like, how, how can I relate it to anything? Well, this is the total CM, something coming from the wing and tail, the first two terms. And the last term is the elevator contribution. See, simply it's CM delta times delta. So this is simply equal to CM delta elevator times delta elevator, right? And my point is when I deflect the delta elevator by the maximum deflection, this CM delta elevator should be strong enough. This is the elevator control power, the elevator sensitivity, which is function of the size. This should be powerful enough such that when I have the maximum deflection, I'm able to get the, the, the demanding 0.55, right? So the problem said that the elevator is constrained between uh, negative 25 to positive 20. Let, let, let's stop here for a, for a moment, please. We agreed that we need to deflect our elevator up. Any issue with that, please? Any issue with that? So upward elevator, is it positive or negative? So this is something that we, so, so just from the story, from the story, we learned that the airplane is nosing down naturally. I need to provide the nose up moment and the nose up moment comes naturally from a, an upward elevator. Okay, period. Now we need to ask ourselves, the upward elevator, is it positive or negative? And this has to do with the sign convention that the community choose to speak, right? So the sign convention, It's actually for any flap, any flap deflection. If it's downward, it, it's positive. So the same, and the same applies for the elevator. 
elevator down is positive, elevator up is negative. So this means that I need to apply an upward elevator. It means that I need to apply a negative elevator deflection. So I'm going to take, which number should I take from the two limits? Negative 25 degrees. Exactly. So I'm going to substitute here this with negative 25 degrees. And from here, I determine how powerful my elevator should be. The required CM delta elevator, the required elevator control power. Obviously, it's negative. I'm going to be always negative. I'm going to divide 0. 0.55 to 25 degrees. And I'm going to get a, a number. And this number will be in what unit? Is it one over radians? One over one over radians or one over degrees, but if I have 25 degrees, it will be per degree, right? Okay. So uh, let's see how much is that. This is 0.022. This is how much, how powerful my elevator should be. This should depend, logically, should depend on the elevator size. And hopefully I should have an equation in the course that relate this to the elevator size. And indeed we, we, we do. So from last lecture, CM delta elevator was negative eta tail VH CL alpha tail times tau elevator. And this is the general aviation airplane, right? So uh, let's have these characteristics before we, we, we consider this, this airplane before. Eta tail was 0.9, VH was 0.66, CL alpha tail, let's see. 3.65 per radians. So I have these. I have eta tail is 0 0.9. This is 0 0.66. And this is 3.65 per radians. And on the other hand, I have this as required negative 0.022 per degree, right? So the only unknown in this equation is tau elevator, and I'm going to get tau elevator. But before getting it, do you want to adjust anything in this equation or you think we're ready? Don't you need to change uh, the unit of CL alpha tail to per degrees? Exactly, exactly. Thank you. So here we have per radians, here we have per degree. So let's get one to the other. Maybe I can multiply this by 180 over pi. Now the both sides of the equation have the same unit. I can simply divide. And I get tau elevator from here. It's something like 0. 0.58. Well, it's, what, what is tau elevator? I mean, it's not it's not the elevator size. Yet. It's not S elevator. It's not the area of the elevator. Yes, but if you remember from last lecture, this is lecture four. This nice curve for any tau. Excuse. Maybe I can take it all the way. Oops. <laughs> all right. This is for any tab in the course. I mean, for any surface, any surface, look at this. So you have tau here on the vertical axis and you have here, what is that? Control surface area over the lifting surface area. This is for any three-dimensional surface, for any wing-like surface. You can use it for the wing, you can use it for the horizontal tail, and you can use it for the vertical tail. In particular, here we're talking about the horizontal tail. So for the horizontal tail, what is the control surface area and what is the lifting surface area? Well, the lifting surface area is always the area of the entire thing. So it's the area of the entire tail. So this is S tail. And the control surface area, the part that is controllable, that is movable, is simply the elevator. So indeed, this ratio here is simply S elevator by S state. This is S elevator by S state. So I got my tau 0.58, so some, somewhere like here. I go and I get the corresponding S elevator by S tail it becomes something like around 0.4. And we know S tail, so I got my S elevator from this equation.
to S elevator is 17.2 feet square. So I managed to size my elevator. Any question about the story or about how we solve this problem? This is a very important problem. It's an educational problem. Tells us about many things all at once. Any question about the story? Actually, yeah, um, just to like reiterate, um, for what reason would you have your flaps down during landing? Because I was thinking, oh, you wanted your flaps up in order to, for your elevator not to do as much work or as like to, to not have such a high pitch. Yeah, I mean, it's, thank you. This is a good, very good question. So the point is, again, let, let's, let's look at it from this perspective. So uh, we are stability and control guys. We're not performance, right? So uh, our job is really to remedy any side effect caused by performance issues. So the airplane need to generate enough lift to carry its weight. And unfortunately, I mean, this, this happened. Uh, we, we can generate enough lift if we're flying fast enough. So that, that's fine. And unfortunately, when we're not flying fast enough, when we are during landing, so this velocity is decreased much. So I must compensate it by a larger CL. And a larger CL, how can I increase my CL? If I'm flying here at certain cruise condition with some CL, how can I increase my CL? Well, please go ahead and increase your angle of attack all the way because we know that CL depends linearly on the angle of attack. Fine, I'm gonna increase my angle of attack all the way, but there is a limit because I'm gonna hit stall. So, okay, so right before the limit, I'll be there. So this is alpha landing right before the stall. But actually, typically, this is not sufficient. This is not enough. You increase your lift, but the earth coefficient, but not enough. We need more. All right, so uh, to provide more, I mean, we have the flap. This is the, main, this is the main objective of flap, actually. Any flap, whether it's here, there, or wherever, any flap, when you deflect it, you can control the lift on your surface. You deflect it down, you increase the lift, you deflect it up, you decrease the lift. So the wing, sole role of the wing is to generate lift. It is the largest surface on the airplane. So I'm gonna deflect the flap deflection on the wing, all the way down to increase the lift on the wing. And hopefully this will be enough to maintain this balance lift equal weight now the performance folks and aerodynamics folks they are done now they managed to have lift equal the weight and they are done engine folks they this will cause extra drag the engine folks will worry about how to provide enough thrust for this for the for the side effect we as fly dynamicists we're going to worry about our part which is well this extra lift on the wing from the flap deflection has a side effect which is a, a down pitching moment and we need to worry about that. So uh, I can't go back and tell the aerodynamics folks, hey, you, you, you should not use your flap at this configuration or please decrease the flap deflection or do whatever. This is a necessity for them. And we, we simply are there to, to remedy any issue or any side effect comes from their decisions. Any questions? Uh, uh, was the reason for the first CG shift to make it steeper, more negative? Is that just because of like how the fuel is lost or something? Yeah, that's a good question, David. Uh, yes, it's uh, so the CG travels inevitably and it travels between bounds. So the weight and balance folks, they will come and say, hey, I mean, we minimize the CG travel as much as possible, but here is the, the limit. The CG travel uh, between this and that values. And it's our job in flight mechanics that we make sure that this is an allowable range, meaning that the most, the back or the most backward value of the CG is still ahead of the neutral point so that if, if we are at operating at this CG location, then uh, we're, still, we're still stable. And the most forward CG location the elevator size should be powerful enough to to balance the airplane during landing at this it's it's you can you can say that this is the worst case scenario in terms of balance 
and we're considering the worst case scenario. And yes, the CG travel is mainly due to due to uh, weight, due to I'm sorry, fuel consumption. So would that CG shift not always be forward or backwards? It yes. just depends. Yes. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? So, again, if this is uh, my airplane, and really this is the, the neutral point, right? So the CG travel here, this is the CG, and it, it travels back and forth during flight, we want to make sure that the CG doesn't travel be behind the neutral point or even by a, by a margin of safety. And uh, the point is, okay, that as the CG travels forward, the airplane becomes more and more stable. But sometimes it becomes too stable, right? Like here, you can see that the slope becomes too steep. So it makes it harder and harder for the elevator to trim, to balance during landing. So I already designed my elevator, fine. But once I design my elevator, so this S elevator is fixed. This immediately puts a limitation on the CG, right? So the CG cannot now travel behind a certain limit because the elevator is already sized and uh, like I said, the, the more CG travels in this direction, it makes it harder and harder for the elevator. The elevator is already sized and it has already a maximum capability. So there are gonna be some limit beyond which if the CG travel, then the elevator will not be able to balance during landing. So this actually gives you um, a range from flight mechanics perspective on the CG travel. One that is due to what? So the neutral point, this is dictated by what? Any suggestions? this neutral point limitation, the backward limit is dictated by what? Like, why do we have this limit in the first place? Uh, CM alpha slope should be negative, and if it's uh, flat, then that's the neutral point. Exactly, and so what are the consequences? Why do we care about the slope? Like in, 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 uh, in layman terms, in, if you're gonna describe it to an outsider, why do we have this limit? Because of what? What will go wrong? We will lose static stability. Exactly. So this is this is dictated by stability, right? So this is a stability limit. And now we are introducing another limit. We're gonna call it actually XCG most forward, most forward. This is dictated by what? Hmm. Any suggestions? Uh, the size of the elevator and how how up angled it can be. Exactly. Very good. And and like what can go wrong? Like here, if the CG travels behind the red line, the airplane will be unstable. Here, if the CG goes beyond or in front of this limit, what will happen? Will it actually like not be able to land? Exactly, exactly. Very good. Because, because look at this. We are talking about balance here, right? So the airplane is, is pitching down, is nosing down. When, I, when I'm saying nosing down, it's con continuously nosing down. It, it didn't like get a negative angle of attack and that's it. It has a moment. A moment is like a force, right? So it causes an acceleration. So if you wait for a second, it will give you a velocity, and if you hit with for another second, this velocity will increase even more. So you're continuously pitching down. This is not allowed, right? So we're talking about balance. Balance means bringing the pitching moment to zero. So uh, this is really a balance, a balance limit. And uh, as you guys know, we call balance what? We call it trim. And in particularly, we this is trim, the, the worst case scenario is trim during landing, right? So uh, the red limit, which is the backward limit, is dictated by stability. This is a stability limit. 
the most forward limit on the CG is balance limit, particularly it's landing balance or landing trim. Any question about that? So uh, the second part of this lecture, which we're gonna start now, is actually to determine this most forward CG location. We, we learned before how to get the neutral point. If you remember, this was so easy. Here is the equation x neutral point over c bar. You already did it in the quiz last time and we had some problems on it. x neutral point minus cg, this distance between the neutral point and the cg is simply given by negative cm alpha over cl alpha, just the two slopes divided by, or if you have the cm versus cl characteristics, it's just the negative of that, right? So uh, typically, When I say CM alpha, this is at a particular CG, of course, right? It's called CM alpha CG, actually. So this is at a particular CG. So when you're giving me a CG, it comes with a corresponding CM alpha. Or alternatively, this is the other slope, right? So uh, DCM by DCL. So any give any moment characteristics comes at a particular CG, right? So uh, the, the CL alpha has nothing to do with the CG. This is lift, it's not moment. So it has nothing to do with the CG, it's pure aerodynamics. And okay, we have an equation for it and we're done. So from this equation, of course, uh, at a time we, we use only one of the, of the right-hand side. So if I'm given the CM alpha and CL alpha, I use this right-hand side. If I am given CM versus CL, I'm using this other right-hand side, okay? All right, so I'm given CM alpha and CL alpha. And of course, when I'm given CM alpha, I'm given the corresponding CG. So I have everything here. The only unknown is the neutral point. Please get your neutral point. And the neutral point is an aerodynamic characteristics. It's, it's, like, the, it's, it's like the aerodynamic center. It's exactly the aerodynamic center of the airplane. The aerodynamic center for a wing or an airfoil is just that quarter cord and has nothing to do with CG or whatever, it's just pure aerodynamics. And it's the same for the airplane. This neutral point is fixed, all right? It's, it's, it's just aerodynamics. So now I'm gonna repeat this equation one more time. So I'm gonna just simply copy it one more time. After I determined the neutral point, and I'm gonna apply it again. And I'm gonna apply it again. So, uh, now, what do I have? Well, the CL alpha doesn't change. It's an aerodynamic characteristic. And the neutral point also doesn't change by the CG travel. It has nothing to do with the CG. All right. And what does change with the CG? Well, of course, XCG itself. Now I'm, 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 I'm calling it most forward, MF, most forward. So it has a corresponding CM alpha, most forward, or a corresponding DCM by DCL, most forward. If I am gonna get this XCG from this equation, this is my unknown. Anything else should be ready. So um, if I'm using this right-hand side, for example, oopsies. if I'm using this right-hand side, look at this. The neutral point is, is, is already obtained. Seal alpha, I have it from before, and I need to get the XCG and this XCG most forward is corresponding to like the maximum slope that the airplane can handle, right? So in order to get CG from here, I need to get the maximum slope that the airplane can handle. So how can I get that? Let me, I need to, uh, it's okay. I was about to say that just to keep things with the same color code to prevent confusion. All right, we're talking about this this limit, of course, the trim during landing. So how can I get the CM alpha? It's just simply from trim during landing. Here is the equation for the CM. It's CM equals CM zero plus CM alpha alpha plus CM delta delta, right? Now we're gonna assume that CM zero is not changed. CM delta is not changed. I can't assume that CM alpha doesn't change because really CM alpha depends on the CG travel. It comes associated with the CG. 
stamped on it. So now, if I'm gonna talk about trim during landing, for trim, what is the value of CM? Uh, zero. Zero, very good. And it's not any trim, a trim during landing. So alpha will be what? Any suggestions? What will be alpha? Maybe it's maximum value. Exactly, thank you. It's the maximum alpha max or alpha of the landing if it's given, right? Very good. And what about delta elevator? Any suggestions? It's gonna be its maximum too. It's maximum, but sometimes the maximum in negative and maximum positive are different. So this is the maximum in what? Uh, negative. Negative. Very good. So now look at this equation. Everything is known except the same alpha. And of course, we're talking about same alpha most forward, right? Because these are the conditions of the most forward, trim during landing. Get same alpha most forward from here and substitute it. There, we're done. I can do the same scenario if I'm given the CMCL characteristics. It's it's the if I'm given this, so it's it's I'm using the second right hand side. So my moment equation will be CM equals CM zero left plus DCM by DCL CL plus CM delta delta. It's very similar scenario. CM is zero left doesn't change. CM delta doesn't change. I can't assume the same thing for the slope CM versus CL because really it's exactly like the slope of CM alpha. Remember DCM by DCL is simply CM alpha over CL alpha. And I'm gonna repeat myself. So trim during landing, any trim, this is zero. In particular, if it's during landing, this will be the maximum lift coefficient or the landing. Right, And if it's really the maximum, I'm gonna use here the maximum in negative like we, we have discussed before. And the only unknown in this is the DCM by DCL most forward. Take it from here and substitute it. So this equation, you can get the XCG most forward. Let's have some training. You have any questions folks about this story? We're gonna have a couple of examples. So hopefully things will be clearer, but let me know now. I have a question. Um, yes, David. I don't understand how you got X neutral point because you reuse the equation. Uh, no, this is the very first step. So before in, before indulging in any business has to do with the most forward, I'm going to use this equation. And uh, to get the neutral point, I must be given the pitching moment characteristics at some CG. And this is typically given. So say... Here is the CG, look at this example for ex that we're gonna consider now, for example, this is lecture five. Yeah, here is. Look at this, we're always given some CM versus alpha characteristics and it never come unspecified. It comes also always with a stamp for the CG, right? So for this equation, I have this CM alpha at a particular CG and we're given the CL alpha, so I'm done. I'm, I can get the, the neutral point. And once I get it, it is fixed irrespective of the value of the CG. I used, it, I used a particular value for the CG to get it, but yes, it's, it's, it's still independent of the, of the CG. If the CG travels, this will change and this will change accordingly and the neutral point will remain the same, all right? Okay, I get it, thank you. You're welcome. So let's go to this example. What do we have? We have CM versus alpha curve for a large jet transport airplane in, in figure one. Here is the figure. All right, so we have, this is CM versus alpha. And uh, what else? 
We also have CL versus alpha characteristics. So I can get the slope. The slope easily is identifiable here is 0.08 per degree, right? We have the elevator is constrained between negative 15 and 20, fine. And we have three requirements. The first requirement is to make the stick fixed neutral point. We need the neutral point. So let's get the neutral point. So that's easy. I'm going to use the exact same equation. Let's copy it. And here is the question. Should I use, should I use this right-hand side or that right-hand side? Well, it really depends on the givens. If you're given the CM versus alpha and CL versus alpha, use this right-hand side. If you're given CM versus CL, use that right-hand side. Here in this equation, I'm given CM versus alpha and I'm given CL versus alpha. So I'm gonna use this first right-hand side. Any question about that? Okay, so um, what do we have here? Well, the CG is given is quarter chord. So this is quarter. So I need CM alpha and CL alpha. I need the, the two slopes. Well, the CL alpha is really here. So this is 0 0.08 per degree, right? So I need simply the slope of the CM versus alpha characteristics. And as usual, uh, pick any line because all of them have the same slopes. So pick any line, say I'm gonna pick this line. I'm gonna pick two points on the line. I'm gonna call this one and this is two. And really CM alpha is simply CM two minus CM one over alpha two minus alpha one. So this is what? Well, it seems that we don't see the alpha values here. The figure is cropped, I'm sorry about that. So, uh, can I get rid of that? Can I delete? That? We have 15 alpha. Uh, yeah, this is 15. So maybe I can actually look at, okay, control Z. I can do the following. I can have here, I can give you the values of alpha. So the values of alpha or this was what? Um, what's it's two, zero six, and 15 degrees. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. And this is 15 degrees. All right. So uh, the CM2, yeah, thank you. So the CM2 is negative 0.3, right? This value is negative 0.3. CM1 is something like negative 1, 2. Alpha 2 is 15 degrees, as stated, minus alpha 1 is 0. So I get a value. And what is the unit? Any suggestions? 1 over degree. The I'm sorry, say it again. 1 over degree. Yes, exactly. I'm just dividing by degree. So this is really per degree. And how much? Let's get the value. So CM alpha is 0 0.0112. Right. So that's fine. I'm going to have this 0 0.0112 here, negative 0 0.0112. And the only unknown is X neutral point. Let's get the neutral point, please. Any question about that? Any question? Folks, this is, a, this is the heart of the midterm, by the way. And there's going to be another homework that is, I'm going to post it right after the lecture. It will be about this stuff, about what we're talking about now. Neutral point, most forward CG, trim during landing, blah, blah. OK, the second point is uh, the elevator control power. W what is that? What is the elevator control power? Any, like, like here, the beginning, so the first point, the neutral point, I know this is X neutral point, fine. And everything, it, always it's normalized by the C bar. The second, it needs the elevator control power. What is the elevator control power? 
What is that? Uh, it's the CM Delta Elevator. Exactly. Thank you. CM Delta Elevator is the elevator sensitivity, elevator control power, how powerful your elevator is. So I need the other slope. Well, if I'm given the airplane geometry, I have an equation for the CM Delta Elevator. It's actually this equation, right, in terms of CL alpha tail. This VH is, as you guys know, it's S tail, L tail, blah, blah. And it's function of the elevator size. So this is CM delta elevator if I'm given the airplane character geometry. But here is actually, you're already given the, the airplane characteristics, pitch and moment characteristics. Remember this figure, similar to this equation, similar to this equation. This equation has three variables, alpha, delta, because this, this, these are the variables that change during flight. The angle of attack changed during flight, as long as, as soon as you change the speed, the angle of attack immediately changes. So the angle of attack changes during flight. The elevator changes during flight. This is your controller. Once the pilot touches the stick, the elevator changes. And the CM change accordingly due to the changes in these two variables. So we have three variables here in this equation, right? And, and the, sometimes we're giving you a figure instead of the equation. It still, it has three variables. It has CM and the vertical axis. It has alpha on the horizontal axis, and it has elevator corresponding, elevator value corresponding to each one of these lines, all right? So uh, in order to get the slope between CM and alpha, like we did here, so between one of the variables and another, I must held the, th the, the third fixed. So we held the elevator fixed, holding the elevator fixed, meaning, okay, pick any line. So I pick that line corresponding to delta elevator equal 10 degrees. So the points one and two, both of them have the same value of elevator, 10 degrees. Now, if I want to get the, the CM delta elevator, now we're talking about CM versus delta elevator, I must hold the third variable fixed. The third variable is alpha. So I need to pick any value of alpha and keep it constant. So alpha is in the horizontal axis, so I need any vertical line along a specific value for alpha. Maybe this vertical axis along zero is a good candidate. So please pick any two points along this vertical axis. Here is one point already, and maybe I can take this other point. Or maybe this is not bad. So I'm going to call it point three, and I'm going to say CM delta is simply CM3 minus CM1 over delta elevator 3 minus delta elevator 1. This is how much? Let's look at it. CM3 is something like 0.17 minus CM1. We already have it before. This was negative 0.12 over delta elevator three. Can anyone tell me what is delta elevator three? It's zero. Yeah, exactly. You look at the at this line, it's corresponding to zero deflection minus delta elevator one. What is the elevator deflection corresponding to one? Look at this, this is 10 degrees. So from here we get CM delta elevator, it's typically negative. And what is the unit of it from here? Per degree. Per degree, very good. So same delta elevator is 0.03, negative 0.03 per degree. We got the elevator control pile. So for each one degree elevator, we will get 0.03 pitching moment for the airplane. Fine. And just to complete the characteristics, like if I if I want to really to uh, reproduce this figure as, a, as an equation, like CM is CM zero plus CM alpha alpha plus CM delta delta, right? This is, this figure really corresponds to this equation. Well, the CM alpha, we got it from before, this was negative point 012, put it in, in blue. Negative point 012 per degree. And CM delta, we just got it here. So this is really negative 0.03 per degree. And what is CM zero? What's that? 
Well, by definition, CM0 is the CM value at zero alpha and zero delta. So I go to the figure, I pick the line corresponding to zero delta, and I go all the way at zero alpha. This indeed, where is, this is CM naught, all right? Which we already got before it's point 0.17. So this is point 0.17. So I have the, the entire equation if you like to work with the equation for, for any reason. All right. And this is at what CG? This is at CG. This is not at any condition. This is at a particular CG, in particularly the CM alpha. The slope here is the one that corresponds to the CG. If the CG changes, CM alpha will change. Okay, first requirement, neutral point, we got it. Elevator control power, we got it. Then the third and final is the forward center of gravity limit. What is XCG most forward? All right, how do we get that? We said in order to get that, you need to get the neutral point first. Okay, luckily we got it. Here is the neutral point. Go and apply this equation again. So here is the equation, I'm gonna copy it, put it here. Previously, I had CM alpha as this value with the corresponding CG at quarter, I got the neutral point at point four. Now, the neutral point, if the CG travels to its most forward, the neutral point is fixed, it stays the same. And of course, CL alpha stays the same. But these guys change together, all right? If this becomes the CG most forward, This is also the most forward. And if I'm gonna get the CG most forward from this equation, I need to get the CM alpha most forward from somewhere else and come back here to get the CG and I'm done. So let's think how to get the CM alpha most forward. Well, I'm gonna use this equation, right? And let's see, what do we have? What is constant and what really depends on the CG traffic? What thing really here depends on the CG traffic? Which thing? Didn't you say it was the CM alpha? Exactly, it, this is the, the most important thing that depends on the CG. So this is, I'm gonna put here, this is the thing in my mind that depends on the CG. Anything else, I can assume that it, it, it doesn't change much. So CM note, I'm gonna take the, the same value, 0.17. This guy, we already got it. This was 0 0.03 per degree, right? Now, to get the CG most forward, what is the criterion? What dictates the CG most forward? You have maximum alpha and maximum delta. Yes, exactly. And uh, let's, let's go up a little bit. What is the criterion? What, what dictates it? We, we do it based on what? Like what, why maximum alpha? Because that's where the stall is or where you, where you would land? Yes, exactly, so landing. So, uh, and we, we, the X CG most forward is corresponding to landing, that's true. So what criterion at landing? Is it trim, balance, control, what? Stability? Uh, well, it's trim. It's the trim. So exactly, it's the trim during landing. So always in the back of your mind, it's the trim during landing. So uh, trim means CM equals what? Uh, zero. It's equal to zero. Zero. And like you said, guys, the alpha now, we're, we're, we're alpha landing. So alpha landing or alpha max is actually given in this diagram because here, look at this, it says stall, this hashed, Regime, regime or region, this is a uh, stall. So the maximum alpha is this black alpha is 15 degrees. So this is 15 degrees, the max or the stall, right before the stall. And what about the delta elevator? It's, it's confined between negative 15 and positive 20. Which value are you gonna use? Negative 15. 
the negative 15. Very good. So we're, we're done. So if we put here the negative, the maximum in negative and the maximum angle of attack, zero CM for trim, then automatically this becomes the CM alpha most forward. So from this equation, we're gonna get the CM alpha most forward. And always to check yourself, do you expect CM alpha most forward to become negative, to come out as negative or positive? Negative. Negative. Very good, it's negative. And do you expect it to be, so this was also negative at some regular CG, it's not the limit. Do you expect the CM alpha in value, in magnitude to become larger than 0 0.012 or smaller than it? Larger. larger. Larger, very good. Because this is the largest CM alpha. This is the largest slope that the airplane will experience. So this is as a check for yourself. CM alpha is negative 0 0.041. Yes. So it's actually, and it's per degree from this equation. So you can see that it's almost like three, four times this slope. So simply I'll get this here, put it there to get the CG most forward. Most forward. Maybe I use the same. Should be larger or smaller than the regular CG. The regular CG was at quarter core. This would be should be larger or smaller. Any expectation? CG most forward negative point one one seven. We will discuss this in a minute. So we got the limit here. So the neutral point of this airplane, remember this is, oops. This is your C bar. This is your x-axis. This is your neutral point. We computed it was 0.4, x-neutral point. The original CG was somewhere here, was at 0.25. And uh, it, it may travel forward, the limit, the XCG most forward should be of course less than any other allowable CG. It actually came out negative, so it's here. This is negative 0.117, and this is the most forward, right? Okay, so uh, one last problem quickly which is an interesting problem. So uh, let's discuss it quickly. I mean, we'll, I'm not go through, I mean, it's, it's, it's not that difficult problem, but actually it just has some philosophy in it. So uh, it says, we have an airplane. It, it gives you this pitching moment characteristics at a particular value for CG. So Z CG is 0.3. Here is uh, the corresponding DCM by DCL, right? This is the, the, the couple that always come together, right? This CG with the DCM by DCL. This corresponding to that. And he actually, he actually make it clear. Like he, he said here, Assuming that the CM is zero lift and CM delta elevator, the other things are, are unaffected by the center of gravity travel. So these guys are constants. They don't change much with the CG travel. But of course, the DCM by DCL, the slope 
depends, I mean, significantly on the CG drop. So at a particular CG, I'm given the airplane characteristics, fine. And then the airplane is loaded so that the center of gravity position moves to a new location. And the question is, can the airplane be trimmed during landing where the lift coefficient is one? And we have the elevator deflection, the maximum and minimum. So the answer to this question is polar, is either yes or no. So it's not one of the questions that we're used to in, 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 in homework assignments. So we, but this is a very realistic question and you're gonna encounter in your, in your career. So, uh, and you're, you're gonna encounter similar questions to this all the time. They come from a story. The story is we have the airplane characteristics as the particular CG in the airplane, the CG travel during fuel consumption or whatever. And we're asking a very legitimate question. We have the new CG location. We're asking a very legitimate question. Can we trim the new the, the airplane at the new CG location or not? So how can you uh, turn this story into a fixed requirement that you are used to? Find X when Y equals blah, blah. Or find X, find Y. Any suggestion? Actually, this problem can be solved in one of two ways. Any uh, suggestions, folks? So what is the criterion here? I mean, what is the concern? The concern that the problem is bringing is, can we train at landing or not? Right? So how can we go about this? Go and do trim. Find the elevator, the required elevator deflection for trim. And check what? Oh. Check what? Check if it's between plus and minus 20 degrees. Exactly, if it's between the limits, that's it. So, so this is one route. Go and find delta elevator to trim at the new CG location, right? At the new CG location. All right, another, any other suggestion? What is the other route that we, we could go? Find. most forward CG location, right? And check what? That it's at point one? Yeah, if it's if, if, if this new thing is still within the limit dictated by this limit, right? So uh, I'll leave to you to do this right branch. I'm gonna do this left branch since we are talking about the XCG most forward. And that's so easy actually. So. Uh, Remember to get the CG most forward, I need to get the neutral point first. So here is the equation for the neutral point. Negative DCM by DCL. And that's easy. This is the CG was 0.3, the original CG, and the corresponding DCM by DCL was negative 0.1. So this gives you the neutral point to be at 0.4. And it's an aerodynamic characteristics. It will not change with the CG travel. Now I'm going to use the exact same equation again. I'm going to use the exact same equation again. Now my neutral point is known now, point four, I just got it. And if this is the most forward CG, then this is the most forward slope, the, the largest slope. How can I get the largest slope? Well, we get it from the trim requirement. So CM is CM zero left plus DCM by DCL times CL plus CM delta delta. And in the problem statement, it said that these guys, they don't change, right? CM zero left 0.05, and this is negative 0.01.
negative 0.01 per degree, right? And now for this thing to become most forward, the CM must be what? Zero. Zero. The CL must be what? This is landing. So it's, it's one, it's already given. And the delta elevator must be what? It's maximum in negative. Exactly, very good, maximum negative. So this is the negative 20 degrees. The only unknown here is this, the new slope, DCM by DCL most forward, and we're expecting to be negative, and you expect it to be larger or smaller in magnitude than 0.1, the original value. Hmm. Should it be larger or smaller than 0.1? It should be larger. Larger. This is the largest slope. This is the largest slope. It's actually what? 0.25. So two and two and a half times. Now this is ready. I'm gonna go and substitute it here. I have this is 0.4. This is 0.25. So I'm gonna get the XCG most forward. As 0.15. So again, my neutral point was a 0.4. My original CG was what? My original CG was at 0.3. My new CG was a 0.1. The new CG here. Should I use yep. CG2? This is a 0.1. And I found the limit to be here at 0.15, right? So what is the answer? Is it yes or no? No, oh, because CG2 is outside of. Exactly. So the answer is no. All right. We're done with today. And. See you on Thursday, and there is a homework that's going to be due a week. I will post it right after the lecture. Questions? Thank you, Professor. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Matthews. Um, I have a question. Please. So, um, how did you get negative 0.25? Shouldn't it be a uh, negative three? No, it's actually, uh, never mind. I got it. Sorry. Oh, you got it. Okay. That, that's okay. All right. Professor, I have a question. Sure, David. What does stick fixed mean? That's a very good question. Uh, so, in flyby cable, airplane, it's not flyby wire. Flyby wire means, fly -by -wire means that uh, when you give a command, like when you move the stick, it doesn't go to the elevator directly. It goes to a computer and the computer processes, what do you mean by this movement? And the computer itself applies the command to the elevator, all right? So there is always this intermediate uh, device between you and the airplane surfaces. And actually the first air, the first fighter airplane to be fly by wire was the F-16. So when the pilots start to fly this thing, and whenever they give a command, they don't feel the response immediately. There is something different. And it's not about the immediate response, it's about, it doesn't, you know, it, it, it makes processing. So uh, it does it on its own uh, decision. So you don't exactly get what, what you want. So they, they, they were saying something like, uh, you never fly F-16, it flies you. All right, so this is fly-by-wire. Fly-by cable is, you have direct linkage between your stick, your control wheel and stick and the uh, control surfaces, okay? So sometimes in the flyby cable, you're not holding it all the time. You're just leaving it, okay? You're, you're leaving. I mean, the airplane is cruising, everything is fine, and you're leaving it. So the elevator surface is not fixed at a, at a particular location. Sometimes it's floating. So any air will move it up and down. It's floating elevator. If the elevator is floating, it may come to another equilibrium position, a different delta elevator than you like i mean because now it's 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 governed by its natural dynamics and the air all right 
So uh, this is what we call stick free versus stick fixed. Stick fixed, so you're holding the stick and the elevator is, is, is held constant, all right? The airplane characteristics are diff a little bit different from one configuration to another. So sometimes they always like to stress it. We're talking about the stick fixed neutral point. Unfortunately, in this course, we'll not have time to talk about the stick free. Okay, but uh, I hope you got the, the difference. And again, if you if you have the concepts here, it's just one extra paragraph that you can read and to how to compute the stick free neutral point, for example. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I just had a question about the logistics for next week. Are, mm -hmm. are we going to go in person or do you plan on keeping the class online? That's a very good question. What I, uh, this is assuming that the university will, will go back, right? Because I mean, at any moment they can come back and say, I mean, we're, we're keeping it online. Yeah. Personally, I prefer, I prefer in-person teaching. Uh, it's more engaging. You, it's pros and cons. What, what do you think? Well, I enjoy in person as well, but at the same time, the eight a.m. is easier to be online. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, I, I, I may yeah, I, make a poll. I mean, it's just my experience. Whenever I make a poll, people complain. I don't know why. I mean, <laughs> if you like, uh, uh, professor. Yes. Um, what you may consider would be like saying one of the days is online and one of the days is in person, um, as sort of like a flex environment. Or you, I don't know if the lecture hall were assigned has it, but some of the UCI lecture halls have like this casting service where it just automatically records the lecture hall video and audio and it uploads it to Yuja. I don't know too much about that myself personally, but those I are see. some options. I see. Maybe uh, we can do the following. Uh, maybe we can give like maybe one week, one week in person, like a couple of lectures. And then, and then I make a poll. And we go with the majority. Sure. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, thank you, Professor. Joseph. I'll see you in person next week. See you. Bye-bye.